Here's the good news though for you fans of the warmer temperatures. We're going to continue to see that warmer air press into our direction. High pressure is making its way off the coast now and you have a clockwise flow of air around the high so we can clearly see that warmer air mass to our south and west and with more of a southwesterly wind flow now taking shape that's going to bring back those warmer temperatures. Folks starting to uh, get their travels on the way here this Friday morning and yes it is pretty comfortable and the big question for folks what would you rather deal with this uh, high heat humidity we're talking about right now or how about this picture? Believe it or not, six months ago on this day, this is what we were dealing with, that big-time snowstorm in the month of January. So tweet me your thoughts on which you'd rather deal with. But when you're talking about a sleet potential here, most of the air is below freezing, but there's a really thin column of air aloft that is above freezing. Warm air is typically less dense than cold air, so it likes to sit above the cold air a lot of times. And when you have a southeast wind aloft kind of pulling in some milder air off the ocean, you'll get this little thin column aloft sometimes some warmer air. So what happened is, is that we got a little bit of melting there aloft to rain, but then it refroze into the sleet and snow. We have this strong cold front moving in. You have strong upper wi uh, level winds aloft as well, what we call wind shear. So it's a good combination for severe weather. And as I said, we'll have to watch and see just how much daytime heating we can get to build up that instability in the atmosphere. If there's more in the way of clouds that hang around throughout the day, well, then that could definitely help to cut down a little bit on the storm coverage and the severe intensities. So we do have a severe thunderstorm warning in effect for a very small thunderstorm cell currently uh, tracking very quickly off to the northeast across southeastern portions of Nelson County. It's moving off to the northeast at about 50 miles per hour. This uh, severe thunderstorm warning up for southeastern Nelson County and southwestern Albemarle County. That includes Lovingston Schuyler over towards Scottsville. This goes until 5.15 p.m. this evening. We'll put a storm track on on this and if you're in the McAuliffe area, Porters, Blenheim between now and 517, it is very well possible this storm could track through your area. Wind gusts to 60 miles per hour, one of the biggest concerns right now and also torrential uh, rain that could lead to flash flooding. Of course, you think back to last night, we had a lot of that flooding in southwestern Almaro County, so we'll really have to pay close attention to that. There is another storm that's strong, but no severe warning at the moment for it, uh, moving near the James River out of Buckingham County into Fluvanna County now, so Palmyra, Wilmington, Ferncliff Mineral between now and 530. This storm cell could move through with at least wind gusts to 40 miles per hour and maybe some pea size hail, but be on alert for possible strengthening of that cell and uh, any possible warnings that may be issued. There's another line that we're tracking showers, maybe a rumble of thunder back across the valley moving eastward at the moment, though. This is just your general garden variety, but of course the atmosphere remains conducive for severe storms. Severe thunderstorm watch up for the entire viewing area until 10 o'clock tonight and a flash flood warning in effect, a flash flood watch, I should say, in effect here for the county shaded in green until 8 p.m. this evening. I'll continue to keep you posted on the latest and check out Twitter, Facebook and NBC29.com for all the latest updates as well. And uh, right off the top here, we do have some warnings to tell you about, folks, where you see this uh, green box, which outlines a portion of northeastern Augusta, good chunk of Rockingham County, including the city of Harrisonburg and southwestern portions of Page County, Shenandoah. This is an aerial flood warning that goes until 11 o'clock tonight. Certainly small stream and creek areas and some poor drainage areas and urban spots. That's where we have to be mindful of flooding there. But the red zone you can see just to the north of Harrisonburg, northern and central portions of Rockingham County, that's a flash flood warning that goes until 7:15 p.m. We've already had reports in the Linville vicinity of flash flooding, so that's where that flooding would occur a lot more rapidly. We have to really be careful. Here's a live look with NBC 29's exclusive dual pole triple Doppler radar. The line of showers and thunderstorms I'm tracking at the moment is north and west of Charlottesville. These are moving off to the east at about 20 miles per hour. No severe thunderstorm warnings at the moment, but certainly some gusty winds, small hail and heavy rain possible. Verona, Standardsville, Sampson and Madison between now and 6:36 p.m. This line of showers and thunderstorms will roll through your neck of the woods. One of the big concerns will continue to be flooding over the next several hours. Flash flood watch remains in effect until midnight tonight. Could see some localized spots of two to three inches of rain and especially those smaller creek and stream areas. That's where we have to be mindful of that flooding potential. There's a slight risk for severe weather. I think it's more isolated in nature, but can't completely rule out a storm with some damaging wind or spotty hail. So definitely don't let your guard down. The next several hours, showers and thunderstorms could increase in coverage, certainly east of the Blue Ridge. I think once we get past, say, 3 a.m. late tonight, that activity comes to an end. Could see some locally dense fog, but I'm tracking another potential for storms tomorrow, and those have the potential to be severe. Good news, we clear the skies out by Monday, and the humidity drops off big time going through much of next week. All the latest with that seven-day coming up. Now I'll send it back to Nora.
Still quite warm tonight, folks. A little muggy out there as well. Starting you off with current temperatures on the Weatherbug Network. Everybody here east and west of the Blue Ridge still well into the 70s, even still 81 degrees currently for Freeman Field Airport there for Louisa. I think there will be a lot of spots tonight that don't get below 70 degrees here. The Shenandoah Valley slightly cooler, getting back down into the middle 60s, and we'll continue to see clouds increasing, and it looks like widely scattered showers and maybe even a thunderstorm. That coverage will pick up well after the midnight hour and especially as we get into first thing Monday morning. So I do think it's going to be a wet start to your day here. Have that rain gear on hand. 70% chance through the morning commute for showers and thunderstorms with some locally heavy downpours and gusty winds. Temperatures slowly climbing through the low 70s with a light breeze, unless, of course, you do get in on a thunder shower. So a much cooler day anticipated to start the week here for your Monday. A lot of cloud cover with those thunder shower chances. Talking highs, many of us not getting out of the 70s. I think a few spots, mainly east of the Blue Ridge, could touch 80 degrees. We'll have an east-northeasterly breeze, 5 to 10 miles per hour. So what we're tracking, cold front is moving in from the west, and that is teaming up with some tropical moisture coming in off the Atlantic. This is actually some moisture from Tropical Depression Julia. We've been following that system for the last several days, just slowly meandering off the Carolina coast. It's going to weaken to a remnant low, but again, some of that moisture being thrown in our direction, teaming up with this cold front, a good setup for some heavy downpours. And given how dry things have been over the last several weeks, this is definitely some decent rain. There's going to be a very low flood threat as well, given how dry things have been. So here's how it looks on Futurecast. You can see that coverage of showers and storms increasing as we go into the wee hours of our Monday morning. Notice the hit or miss nature, though. There's going to be times where somebody is getting some pretty solid rain. You go a few miles away and there's hardly anything. That's how this is going to go as we go into our Monday morning and going into our Monday afternoon. Here we are, the lunchtime hour. It looks like maybe some of that heavier activity does slide off to our east, but we'll still be dealing with a spot shower, perhaps a storm through our Monday evening commute. Looks like gradually here the activity dwindling for Monday night late into the wee hours of Tuesday morning. Some lingering clouds, maybe an isolated shower for your Tuesday, but should start to see a little bit more in the way of clearing sky as we go later into our Tuesday afternoon. So expected rainfall totals. Again, this is going to vary quite a bit. This is one particular computer model projection, and I think on average area-wide we can expect about a half inch to maybe as high as three-quarters of an inch. But this model shows you how if some of these storms set up in the right spot and they kind of train or just kind of keep happening over one particular area, there's certainly the potential to see quite a bit more. You're talking one, two inches plus. I think that will be isolated in nature. So here's your Michael and Son seven-day forecast. On Tuesday, starting to see a little bit of that clearing sky, so temperatures warming back in the 80s for highs. Wednesday, a mix of sun and clouds, 84, your high temperature. Yeah, the weather pattern as we progress through the week featuring a big ridge in the jet stream across the east. So above normal high temperatures for us as, of course, the fall equinox officially kicks off Thursday, 10, 21 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So yeah, four days to go. Won't really feel like fall with highs in the low 80s. Friday, 85 and sunny. Saturday, quite warm and sun and clouds, but a cold front tracks in late Saturday night into Sunday. Cool those temperatures back to more seasonable levels. Man, backdoor cold front coming down from the north there. Northeasterly flow of wind providing those more seasonable temperatures where we should be for this time of the year, Nora. So how about the rainfall coming in here? We could sure use it. And once it's out of here, we're looking at a nice stretch of days. The National Weather Service office just outside of Washington, D.C., they oversee many of the counties in central Virginia and the Shenandoah Valley by looking high into the sky. Good evening. Weather Service calling for balloon release. To make a forecast, we need to collect data in the upper levels of the atmosphere. The NWS uses weather balloons. Basically, forecasters can see the atmosphere in a vertical level. These balloons are launched at different weather service offices around the country. There are many released around the nation. So right now, there's one here. There's one in Wallops Island um, in the eastern shore. We can see, you know, how the vertical levels of the atmosphere are, cha are changing, comparing different balloons. They're launched twice a day to record all the changing conditions. The instrument collects data of temperature, pressure, humidity, wind speed, and wind direction. A radio sonde is attached to the balloon, recording data and sending it back to the ground. And as it goes up, it just gives us basically all those measurements every two seconds as it goes, as it goes up in the air. 
All right, we're just about ready to launch our weather balloon. It's close to full capacity here. What we're going to do is attach this parachute to the instruments that will ultimately send back that data that we need for our forecasts. Meteorologists then look at weather conditions at all different levels of the atmosphere. Basically, the balloon will tell us how, will help us uh, determine how unstable the atmosphere is, um, if we're going to expect hail, if we're going to expect uh, thunderstorms, how severe are they going to be, and, and those type of details. It's especially critical during thunderstorms. Since the uh, radius, as it goes up, is measuring winds, uh, wind shear will be basically the change in wind speed direction as it goes up. So days of uh, large instability, we're having like higher wind shear, um, especially in the lowest levels of the atmosphere. So what happens? to the balloon. Because the pressure decreaser decreases with height, the balloon increases in size, and when it's about to pop, um, they have found that it could be as high as a two-story home. Once it pops and falls back to Earth, it contains instructions for whoever finds it to send it back to the National Weather Service, but that does not always happen. Only 20 percent of the U.S. release balloon uh, radiosons are uh, recovered. And, you know, we talk oftentimes, we're talking about thunderstorms, certainly, wind shear and instability, and those particular things, of course, are measured by those balloon launches. And interestingly enough, the computer models as well, the more data that we can get, the more balloon launches and data that we can put into these computer models, the better the chances for the accuracy of those models. You have the American models, the European model, and a lot of times the European model tends to be a little bit better than the American model, hmm. and a lot of that has to do with there's more balloon launches and data that are going into that. That model. So. so quantity means quality in this case. It does in this case, yeah. All right.